very good afternoon my dear students i am guru rajan back again from malnad college of engineering to continue the teaching that uh, where i stopped uh, last time so today's lecture plan is as follows a brief review of methods of proof which was introduced to you in the last class which i'll briefly go through the same just to make sure that we understand the concept we shall try to give an illustrative uh, illustration based on uh, the truth table method also we shall uh, have a discussion on what the various rules of what inference theory and how to use the rules of what inference theory to solve problems uh, involving what method of proof later in the program so you will be introduced to predicate calculus and predicate calculus and predicate functions here we'll be having a complete discussion on what quantifiers and uh, illustrate example based on what predicate calculus in the last class i introduced you what is meant by saying uh, that a set of premises implying what conclusion right to begin with to begin with consider a set of what k premises i have considered a k premises h1 h2 h3 etc up to hk now a premise means it is a statement which is given to be what always true please remember a premise means it is a statement which is given which is given to be what true always here i have considered a set of what k premises and c is the conclusion of the argument c is the conclusion of some argument we would like we would like to say that the k premises imply the conclusion c in a logical sense only when you combine all this h1 and h2 and h3 and h2 all these together implying the conclusion c this statement formula must be a tautology when this statement formula is a tautology then i claim that the conclusion c logically follows from what all the k premises are we say that the premises imply the conclusion logically the same will describe symbolically as h1 h2 hk implying what c okay so this is to be read as right that c follows logically from all the pre, all the k premises remember so when this will happen only when what all these imply that one sir implication c is a tautology to understand more on that let me consider an illustrative example this was discussed in the last class which will go through it again now i have considered uh, two premises the first premise is if you invest in stock market then you will get what rich second premise if you get rich then you will be happy so therefore the conclusion is that if you invest in stock market then you will become happy to see whether this is a logically logically following argument or not so what we do we shall try to con form a set of what simple propositions and try to write the proposition in symbolic form using logical connectives let us formulate the problem symbolically and see what best can be done with regard to this so what we do that we shall set up the three premises uh three statement p q r p means you invest in stock market a simple primitive proposition q means you will become rich and r means what you will be happy right so these three simple statements are required for this problem now go to the first premise what the first premise says if you invest in stock market then you will get what rich remember p stands for you invest in stock market q stands for you get rich so h1 can be symbolically written as what p implying q understood correct right so the first premise symbolically what p implies q now coming to the second premise which says that if you get rich then you will be what happy that means what connecting what q and r the same i can write symbolically as what q implying r so conclusion is what that if you invest in stock market then you will become happy so see the conclusion that p implies r right so this problem can be symbolically formulated as what that h1 and h2 implying what c in a logical conclusion logical way i know that this will happen only when what h1 and h2 implying c is a tautology so i must construct the truth table of what this formula that h1 and h2 implicate one side implication c i have to construct the truth table of this formula if this formula turns out to be a tautology then we then we can claim that yes the answer is yes this argument is what logically valid so this we shall uh, proceed now 
Now, because three variables are involved, P, Q, R, three propositions are involved. If you try to construct the truth table of this, so this will contain what eight rows, considering all options that all the propositions are what true, or two are true, the other one is false, or maybe what only one is true, the other two statements are false, or maybe possible that all the statements can be what false. That is the last row. Now, I want to construct the truth value of what? I want to find the truth value of H1 that is what P implying Q. I know that P implying Q is false only when what P is true and what Q is false. Yes or no? We know that P implies Q can be false only when P is true, Q is false. So, therefore, here T F. So, I will write F here. Again T P is true, Q is false. So, therefore, I will write F here. For all other instances, the truth value of P implies Q is what? True. Similarly, we can find the truth values of what H2. Now, H2 again it is Q implying R. We have to work with uh, Q and R, right? As I said earlier, Q implies R can be false only when Q is true, R is false. So, where, where can I find this situation here? Second row, verify Q is true, R is false. So, therefore, the truth value of Q implies R is false. Once again, the sixth row, Q is true. R is false, therefore Q implying R is false. For all other instances, Q implies R will assume the truth value true only. Now, next step is to find the truth values of what H1 and H2. Now, we know that H1 and H2 will be true only when both H1 and H2 are what true, otherwise it is false. That is a logical end operator. We know that H1 conjunction H2 is true only when H1 is true as well as what H2 is so, now working with uh, H1 and H2, so here I have find the truth value true T, here also it is T, so therefore I write what T. Again similar the fifth row, sorry fourth row, so H1 is true, H1 is true, then what H2 is true, therefore I will write here, maybe the last seventh and eighth rows also will find the truth value true. Okay. For other instance it is what false. Now, I want to construct the truth table of what? H1 and H2 implying C, H1 and H2 implying C. I must first, I must have the truth values of what C, that is P implying R, following the same uh, uh, argument explained as above, right. The truth value of what P values are, P implies R will be what T F, T T, F, Y F, P implying R, here P is true, R is false. So, we will have the truth value F, that is the second and fifth, otherwise it is what true. Now, H1 and H3 implying C, if you construct the truth table, you see T, 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 F, F, T, F, T, 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 F, F, T. So, what do you find? That, that in the last column, that the truth values of what? H1 and H2 implying C is always what? True. So, therefore, I can claim that H1 and H2 implying C is a tautology. Hence, right? we can say that H1 and H2 imply the conclusion C logically. Understood? How to form truth table and how to follow the truth table method to determine whether an argument is valid or not. Now, coming to the next problem. Now, here you can notice that uh, there are four variables, right? These are the three premises we have. If I try hard and I have talent, then I will become a musician. The second premise, if I become a musician, then I will be happy. The third premise say that I have not become happy, I am not happy. So, therefore, conclusion is either I did not try hard or I do not have the talent. Now, here to find out whether this is a logically valid argument or not, we shall try to write this problem symbolically using logical connectives. Now, how many propositions are required here? So, four I claim. Why? So, one I can consider that what I try hard. Okay. One parameter, I try hard. The second parameter, I have talent. The third, the, the third statement about becoming a musician and fourth one, I am becoming what? Happy. So, four variables are what? Involved in this problem. Okay. Now, when we when have four variables in the problem, if we try to write the problem, model, model the problem by using what? Logical connectives, we will find what? Totally four variables. So, we shall, we can form this statement that as I claim P means I try hard, Q means I have talent and uh, Q R means what? I become musician, S means I become happy. So, we can write the given premises symbolically as what? First, 
H1 means if I try hard and I have talent, then I am going to become musician. Now, if I become a musician, then I will be what? Happy. The third premise is I am not happy. I not become happy. That is negation, yes. So, therefore, we would like to find out whether all these premises will imply that either I did not have talent nor I have worked hard. Okay. So, the conclusion is what? Negation P or negation Q. So, we would like to find out here whether H1 and H2, H3 will imply C logically. right? So, this will happen only when what? H1 and H2 and H3 implying C is a tautology. So, if you want to follow the truth table method for this problem, because of the appearance of what four variables p q r s here so we'll have a truth table of what 2 power 4 equal to 16 rows okay so therefore it is not practically possible while working with uh, four or what more variables so following the truth table method okay in a situation like this we would like to introduce the various rules of what inference theory so using the rules we can find out whether the argument is what logically valid or not. Now, what are the rules of inference theory one can use? The first rule is a given premise can be used at any time during the argument. Yes or no? Because a premise means what? It is a statement always given to be true. So, therefore, what? We can use it at any time during the derivation of the argument. This is rule number 1. The second rule says a statement can always be replaced by means of what? An equivalent statement. Because, because of the logical equivalence, right? If I have a statement, if I find it confusing or complicated, I can always replace by means of what? A simple but equivalent statement. For example, so P implies Q, right? We have found earlier that P implies Q is logically equivalent to what? Negation P or negation Q. I think it is easier to remember P implies Q than what? Negation P or Q. So, therefore, whenever I find negation P or Q, I can replace it by what P implies Q or vice versa. We can even well replace P implies Q by negation P or Q. Please remember, so this will be used a number of times right in this class. Now, the second statement is what P implies Q is well equivalent to what negation P implying what negation P. This is the contrapositive property. So, we can well even replace P implies Q by negation Q implying negation P. This is rule number so, that is replacement of a formula by means of an equivalent one. The third rule is what? What is called? A, the third rule is the following. In a conditional proof, for example, if a problem is to find out whether A implies B or not, if nothing is told about what? A. So, then I can always start with the assumption that A is what? True. Right? Because we, we would like to find out whether A implies B or not. Okay? Just like saying, right? Now, Right. If I am in Bangalore, can I give a presentation? Right. So, first of all, I should be in what? Bangalore for this to, to deliver lecture that using the VTU edges at ch to channel. Okay. First, I must be present in Bangalore. Otherwise, it is not possible. The question is, right? suppose I want to find out whether Guru Raj will deliver lecture or not using uh, VTU edges at uh, channel. So, I must be first available in what? Bangalore. So, I will start with assumption, yes, I am in Bangalore. Then only whether I will be able to do it or not, RSS. So, this is called what? Rule number 3. So, rule number 4 is called what? Modest ponents. So, modest ponents mean whenever P is true, P implying what? Q is true, then Q is true. Right? Symbolically, P, P implying Q together will imply what? Q. So, this is called what? Rule of modest ponens. I can give an example. Right? Okay, right? Now, if I try hard, okay, if I work very hard and if I do the examination very well, then I'll certainly I will certainly get what? Good marks in the examination. Okay? Suppose, if I really worked hard okay, and carry the same in the examination also, then there is no doubt I will be able to get what? Very good marks in the examination. A situation similar to that. Please remember, modest ponens means if P is true, P implying what? Q is true, then certainly what? Q is true. Right? We can well verify that P implying P and P and what? P and P implying Q, implying Q is a tautology. So, this I explain. We can well find out that P implying H is a Q is a you know how to construct the truth table of this. Okay? You can verify that modest ponens is what true because of that. So, therefore, I can claim. 
the next rule is modus tollens. So, which says the following if p implying q is true, if p implying q is true and negation q is true, then negation p is what certainly true. Symbolically, it is given as negation q and what p implying q, these two together will imply what negation p. So, again, this will happen because this formula will be a tautology, you can verify it. Construct the truth table of this because there are only two variables p and q with four rows. We can construct the truth table and find out whether this is a tautology or not. Remember, modus ponens and modus tollens will be used number of times in the derivation. Okay. Then the next one, what is called what? Law of syllogism. So, law of syllogism is the following. Now, if P implies Q is true and Q implies what? R is true, then certainly what P implies R is true. So, what is law of syllogism? If P implies Q and if Q implies R, then certainly what P will imply R. Just like if there is a road from Belagam to Bangalore and if there is a road from Bangalore to Chennai, certainly there do exist what highway connecting Belagam with what Chennai, a situation similar to that. Symbolically, this one few minutes back we have uh, discussed it, that, uh, that uh, investment stock investment problem we have found out this, this is very much similar to that. Then rule number 7, law of conjunction, which says whenever P and Q is true, obviously P is true, so what Q is also true, this is law of conjunction. Then law of disjunction that P implying what P or Q, if P is true, always what P or Q is true, irrespective of whether Q is uh, true or false, P implies Q is always true, because that what P is true. But on the other hand, for uh, P to be true on the other hand, whenever P and Q is true, P is certainly true. This is called law of logical and this is called law of logical R. So, these are uh, some of the rules normally we use during the derivation or finding whether an argument is valid or not. Now, let us come back to the same problem with which we initiated earlier that if I try hard and I have talent, then I will become a musician. Now, if I become a musician, then I will be happy. The third premise, if I have not become happy, so therefore, I did not try hard nor or I do not have talent. We have seen that this problem is very much symbolically written as what? First premise P and Q implying R, the negation R implying yes, second one, third premise negation yes. We would like to find out whether H1 and H2 and H3 will imply C or not, where C is this, negation P or negation so, we shall proceed uh, as follows. Maybe I can work with this one. That P now, I can follow the law of what syllogism. P and Q implies R. Okay? R implies yes. So, I can come to R from P and Q. Then I can come to yes from what R. So, therefore, we again we can come to what yes from what P and Q using the law of what syllogism. Using the law of syllogism. Yes or no? that P in Q implies R, R implies yes. So, by applying law of syllogism, immediately I will get that P implying Q imply yes. Call this as result 1. Result 1 is what? P and Q imply yes. Now, consider this result R1 and the third premise. What the third premise says? P and Q imply yes. Okay? And negation yes is what? True. Right? So, therefore, by applying the modus tollens, I will get what? Negation of P and Q is true. Now, by what about negation of P and Q? It is nothing but what negation P or what negation Q by De Morgan law. So, what I got starting from H1, H2 and H3, I have arrived at that negation P or negation Q is what true. So, therefore, we can claim that this is a logically valid argument. Okay? So, just in four lines, we are able to we are able to solve this problem by following the rules of what inference theory. Otherwise, right, you know the difficulties involved in the in following a truth table method because what you have to construct a truth table of what 16 rows, it is practically not possible. Of course, it is a very tedious procedure. So, remember to use the law or rules when required. Understood? How we arrived at the uh, validity of this argument? To understand more, so let me consider another problem very much similar to that. Now, for the first premise is, if Hari Priya gets the supervisor position and work hard, then she will get a rise in the salary. 
Now the second premise is if she gets a rice then she will buy a new car. The third premise says she has not purchased a new car. She has not purchased a new car. So therefore the conclusion of the argument is either Haripiya did not get the supervisor position or she did not work hard. This problem is very much very very much similar to the previous problem that we discussed to understand more let us try to write the let us try to follow the form the following simple proposition P means what Haripriya get the supervisor position Q means what Haripriya works hard R means she gets a rise the S means what she purchases a new car so therefore the given premises cannot be written symbolically as what very much similar to the previous problem we can verify here that first P and Q implies R R implies S yes. then third premise negation is yes. therefore conclusion is what negation P R negation Q understood how we have written the premises in the symbolic form including the conclusion. So now we shall try to say and solve the problem by using the rules of what inference theory. Now we shall try to do it in a different way we shall try to do it in a different way. In the previous problem I used what the law of syllogism that P and Q implies R R implies yes so P and Q implies it with which we started we shall try to do it uh, in a different way this time maybe we will work with H2 and H3 that H2 means R implies yes H3 means negation yes now apply the rule of modest tolerance I will get what the result negation R is true yes or no what is modest tolerance if R implies S is true negation S is true then negation R is true according to modest tolerance now R, the result number 1 is negation R now consider the premise H1 and the result just obtained R1 that what negation R is true that is I would like to consider now P and Q implying R and the result negation R. Once again uh, invoking the rule of what modest tolerance I will get what negation of what P and Q is true but negation of P and Q is what equivalent to negation P R negation Q so therefore what this argument too is logically valid understood. So we have done now two problems using the rules of what inference theory to understand more let me consider a discussion on what one more problem take a look at it. Now the premises tells the following the premises is if the band could not play rock music or the refreshments were not delivered on time then new year party would have been cancelled and Anita would have become what angry this is the first premise. So what the first premise is if the band could not play rock music or the refreshments were not delivered on time then obviously we have to can one has to cancel the new year party and someone becoming angry this is the premise number one. The second premise says if the party were cancelled then refunds would have to be made that is the second premise. The third premise says no refunds were made no refunds were made so therefore the conclusion of the argument the, therefore the conclusion of this uh, argument is the band could play the rock music understood now we would like to find out based on these argument whether the band will play rock music or not now note that how many simple propositions we require to formulate this problem symbolically first one the band playing a rock music or not that is first statement second one the refreshment being delivered on time that is second one the third one it is about uh, cancellation or what happening of the new year party fourth one Anita becoming what angry or happy the fifth one is about what refund being made or what refunds were not made. So in this problem I require totally five primitive statements five variables so therefore here also if you want to follow the two table method so totally I will have a table of what 2 power 5 equal to 32 rows it is impo it is uh, not possible right to write or to consider the construction of truth table method. So therefore we shall use the rules of what rules of inference theory to begin with let us consider P as what the band could play rock music Q as the statement refreshments were delivered on time R means new year party is cancelled S means Anita has become angry T means what refunds had to be made. Now using these uh, five simple proposition let us try to formulate the given problem symbolically as first one 
negation P or negation Q imply what R and S. That means what is the what is the first premise? If I go back, if the band could not play rock music or the refreshment were not delivered on time, then your party will be cancelled and Nita will be becoming angry. So this statement I can write it as what negation P or negation Q implying what R and S. Yes. The second statement is what, right? If the party is cancelled, then the refunds have to be made. That is the second premise. You can verify. If the party were cancelled, then the refund would have to be made. So this is what H2 or implying T. But the the last premise is no refunds were made. No refunds were given. So therefore, the conclusion of the argument is what the band could play the rock music. Okay. We shall see how to use the rules of what inference theory. Okay. So what we do. We will start with the third premise and the second premise. We will start with the second premise and what third premise and apply what the rule of what modus tollens. Why? R implies T is true. Now negation T is true. So therefore, by following the rule of what modus tollens, I'll get what negation R is what true. Negation R is true. Yes or no? By following the modus tollens, I'll get what negation R is true. That is result number one. Now, because negation R is true, what can you say about the truth value of what R? It has to be false. Why? Negation R is true, so therefore R must be false, right? Now, due to this, it is clear that because the truth value of what R is false, there is no way truth value of what R and S will be true. So, R and S will be false because R is taking the truth value false. Now, coming to the First premise, which says that this implication is true. Please remember what the first premise says. This implication that negation P or negation Q implying what R and S is true. The implication is true, but this is what false. Yes or no? Already we found that R and S is false, but the implication is what true. Therefore, right? What can I say about the truth value of this? Can I take the truth value T? Can it uh, possible? That negation P or negation Q taking the truth value T, what will happen if this statement take the truth value T? Already R and S is what false. T implying F situation will lead to what F. But the according to the premise that this implication is what true. So therefore, only option I have that negation P or negation Q is what false. Negation P or negation Q is false. This cannot take the truth value. This one cannot take the Truth value t. Otherwise, the whole implication becomes false. It is not true. Now, we know that when this will take the truth value false, only when what both negation p and negation q are what false. Otherwise, it will be true. We know by the truth table of what negation p or negation q or p or q. So, therefore, what I get that negation p is true, false, and negation q is also false. So, therefore, because of that, I get the truth value of what p as true. Hence. I can claim that what the argument is logically valid. Understood? So here we are used what right the modus tollens twice, modus tollens and the uh, truth table and then what the uh, results of what P implies Q. Now coming to the next problem, you can find here. We would like to find out whether the argument is what followed. First premise P implying R and S. Second premise P implies Q. The third premise Q implying what R and S. The fourth premise says negation R R negation T R U. Fifth one says P and T is true. Fifth one says P and T is true. The conclusion is what Q. Whether all these five premises will imply the conclusion Q or not. As you can verify, how many variables we have here? P one, Q two, R is three, S is four, T is five. And u is what six. So in this problem, totally we have got what six variables, right? There is no way of following the, there is no way of following what truth table approach because then we will have to construct the truth table of what sixty four rows. Nobody is prepared to do it. I don't think you will be able to do it. Okay. So we have to use the rules of what inference theory, right? So therefore, right, we shall try to use the rules of what inference theory. I'll explain how I am going to do it here. So maybe I can work with P and T. Okay, you can follow me. I can work with what P and T. Now, because P and T is true, immediately I'll get that P is true 
as well as what t is true. Yes or no? Immediately I will get p is true also what t is true. Now come to h1. Now from here I will get that p is true. Now p implying r and s is true. So therefore I will get what? r and s is odd number 2m plus 1 which is not possible. Given the hypothesis is 31 n plus 12 is even. So our assumption that n is odd is wrong. So once again we conclude that n must be an even integer. Understood? So this third problem where we have used what? The method of what? Indirect proof. There are other methods are also available like inductive proof, okay? Right? Mathematical can which must have been discussed to you already. So we have got a number of methods of what? Proving a result. Direct proof, indirect proof, inductive proof, okay? Logical proof, etc. Okay? So all this, right? After all this uh, a discussion, now we shall uh, proceed to a discussion on what important topic, namely what predicate calculus and what quantifiers. So please remember what you have done so far. Our study so far confined with what a set of what simple primitive propositions or what compound propositions only. So we discuss various concepts like tautology, contradiction, logical equivalence, etc. So all this, right? All this discussion we are restricted ourselves to a simple what proposition, and then the compound proposition formed by using the simple proposition and the logical connectives. Okay. Also we discuss the concept of what duality, etc. The methods of proof, indirect, direct, etc. Now, so to introduce uh, the predicate calculus, so now we shall. Uh, consider the following examples. So, look at these statements. The dog is an animal, okay? cat is an animal, elephant is an animal. So, all the three belongs to what category? Namely, animals. So, I got I can introduce few more like tiger is an animal, lion is an animal, deer is an animal, horse is an animal and the list goes on because we know that there are what? You know, there are infinite number of what? Animals are present in the universe just like us. Okay. Now, to describe all the animals, to describe all these animals, say even if I have say about 1000 animals, right, right, present in a zoo, right, so then I certainly require what? 1000 different symbols to describe what? This. Will you agree with me? Suppose consider a zoo, okay, possessing say about 1000 animals, right. Now, if you want to describe all these 1000 animals, I require what? 1000 different symbol like P1. P1 means tiger is an animal. P2 means lion is an animal like that. P3 is deer is an animal. I require what? P1, P2, P3 up to P1000, 1000 different symbol. But all these different symbol will not imply right that common property that all these are having that what? All these are what? Animal. So, this is not being what? Highlighted by using what? In spite of using these 1000 symbols. Yes or no? Right? So, so in a situation like this to deal with, right, it is appropriate to develop a mechanism using which it must be possible to represent all the common features of what? Object. So, this is what the focus of the study now. So, what is our focus now? How to describe a set of object possessing what? Common features or homogeneous properties, right? The following section is devoted to them. This will introduce to what predicate can for example, what we do here, we will introduce a symbol, a phrase is an animal, just like lion is an animal, cat is an animal, dog is an animal, like that. We will introduce a symbol that a phrase called what is an animal, and secondly, a technique to join it with a symbol representing an animal. So then we are done as uh, the single expression will speak about what all the individuals which are what animals. So, here is an animal is called what predicate, here is an animal is called what a predicate. So, usually a predicate is happened by using a upper case letters and the objects are by used using the lower case letters. So, here I will introduce a predicate A, A means what is an animal. Then all the objects which are animals can be written symbolic as what E of X. So, where X is a variable to be specified from a given universe. So, what is the universe here? Is the set of all what animals. So, X must take a value from what? The set of all universe or what? Universe of discourse. Therefore, right? So, those hundred symbols, right? For various animals, we can have a simple way of writing E of X. What is E of X mean? X is A. 
e of x to be read as a x is what a or x as the property of what a or x as the property of a thus it is clear that e of x to be read as what either x is a or the object as has the property state in the predicate a. Now, since only one variable is used in where, so a of x is called what? One place predicate function or one place statement function or simply an open statement of what? One variable. Similarly, one can introduce two place, three place predicate, etcetera. So, the study of what? Such statements constitute the predicate calculus which form the basis in artificial intelligence, right? So, predicate calculus is a basis for studying artificial intelligence and how expert system functions. So, therefore, right? A discussion on predicate calculus is very much necessary, right? Or a knowledge on where predicate is very much necessary because what, right? Predicate calculus forms what? A basis for the development of what? How uh, expert system functions, or how knowledge based expert system, or how robots functions. So, this subject constitutes what on the same, okay? So, thus it is clear that. All the topic that we discuss with regard to fundamental logic, we can simply extend it to what predicate can like I can introduce a logical and logical or one sided implication, two sided implication, concept like tautology, logical equivalent methods of proof, everything. Whatever we did earlier, the theory that is theory of logic can simply be extended to what theory of predicate calculus and the same can be discussed. So, we shall take a break from here and uh, hope to continue next time. When you meet next time, we shall uh, consider a detailed dis discussion on what predicate calculus. Thank you for watching. Yes or no by modest ponents. Similarly, because p is 2, if I use h 2, p is 2, p implying q is 2, so q is 2, I will get that what? Uh, again by modest ponents. So, what I have got now, right? From h 1, h 2 and h 5, I will get what? R is 2, s is 2 as well as what? q is 2. Now, because q is 2, so immediately I will get what? R and s is 2. Now, what about now negation R? Now, follow H4. Already I have got that R is true. Then what? S is true. T is true. Okay. Now, this fourth statement is what? True. Because R is true, negation R is what? False. Yes or no? And then, because that what? T is true, negation T is what? False. Yes or no? So, what can you say about U now? So, U has to be what? True. U has to be true. So, therefore, I uh, will get that conclusion as what? It is not q, sorry, the conclusion is what? Whether u is true or not. Please remember, sorry, I will make a correction in this problem. The conclusion is whether u follows or not. It is not q, u follows or not. So, this I can get from all this. I will explain once again for your benefit, right? You work with p and t, okay? Now, p is true, t is true, p and t is true, so p is true. Now, p implying r and s is true. So, R and S is true, I will get that R is true, S is true. Next, now Q is any out true, I will get from using H1 and H y. Now, Q is true, Q implying R and S is true, therefore, what I will get R is true, S is true. Now, here what happened? Because R is true, negation R is false. Because T is true, negation T is false. But the statement is true. This will be possible only when what? U is true. So, the conclusion argument is that all the five premises will imply what? U. Yes or no? The same I have explained. The same I explained working with P and T. I will get P and T both are true. So, negation T is false. Now, P implies Q, Q implying R S. So, by using law of syllogism, I will get that R and S is true. Okay, right? 
Now, because now because this is true, already we have found that negation or false, negation T or false. Only option left for us is to believe that U is true. So therefore, the given argument is logically valid. Now coming to the next problem, we can verify here. This is the problem based on what conditional proof. You see, H1 says U implies R. H2 says R and S implying P R T. H3 says Q implying U and S. H4 says negation T. We would like to find out whether Q will imply P or not. Whether Q will imply P or not. This is the argument. Now this is a problem based on what conditional proof and uh, nothing is given about Q. Nothing is given about whether Q is true or whether Q is false. Nothing is told. In a problem like this, conditional proof, I can include an additional premise. I can include an additional premise that what Q is true and then trying to find out whether Q will imply P or not. Therefore, in this problem, we shall introduce an additional premise in the form of what Q. So, H y is Q is true. Now, consider H 3 and H 5. What is H 3 and H 5? H 3 means Q implying U and S. H 5 means what? H y means Q. By following the modus opponents, uh, I will get that what? U and S is true. I will get that U and S is true. Okay. Now, I get the result that U and S is true. But U and S is true means what? Both U and S are true propositions. Okay. Now, consider this result R2 and the first premise. What the first what the first frame is that u implying r. Now, u is to u implying r is to therefore, by modus ponens I will get what what result number 3 that what r is true. Now, as r and s are already what true proposition we have found that. Okay. So, using the second premise that h r implying s implying what p and t I get that p r t is what a true statement p r t is a true statement yes or no because r is true s is true r and s is true R and S implying P R T is true, which is H2 actually. So, I will get that P R T is true. But uh, just now, uh, uh, 10 minutes back, we discussed that P R T is same as what T R P and T R P is what equivalent to negation T implying what P. P. So, therefore, using H4 here, that negation T is true, negation T implying P is true. So, therefore, ultimately, we will come, we will get that P is here true proposition. So, therefore, starting from the assumption that Q is true, we are arrived at that P is true. So, therefore, right, this conditional argument is valid. Understood how we have uh, arrived at the solution, how we are uh, trying to follow the rules of inference theory. I hope you are also following the same. So, take down very carefully and uh, go home, work out these once again. You will be able to understand the concept thoroughly. Now, after having a discussion on what all this, let us consider some discussion on what direct and indirect proof, direct and indirect. Sometimes we can give a proof directly, at times it is not possible. So, therefore, in such a situation, we will try to give an indirective proof. For example, so consider uh, this problem that I start with uh, n as what positive integer. I want to prove that n is odd if and only if what n square is odd. That is, if n is an odd integer, then its square is also an what? Odd integer. On the other hand, if n square is an odd integer, then n must be what? An odd integer. We shall try to discuss both what direct and indirect proof for this problem. Now, how to prove the first part by assuming that what n is true to prove that what n square is an odd number. We very well know that an odd integer can be written as what? 2 k plus 1. Yes or no? an odd integer, we can write it as what? Either 2 k plus 1 or as what? 2 k minus 1, where k is some integer. For example, of odd integers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 71, 89, etcetera, these are all what? Odd numbers. Okay. Now, I want to show whether n square is what? Odd or not. For that, I will square what? n square. Now, what is n square now? It is 2 k plus 1 whole square, expand by using a plus b whole square formula. I will get 4 k square plus 4 k plus what 1. The same and write it as 2 times what 2 k square plus 2 k plus 1. I written 4 k square plus 4 k as 2 times 2 k square plus 2 k plus 1, which is same as what 2 m plus 1, where I choose an m as what 
2k square plus 2k is again an integer because k is an integer, k square is an integer, 2 times k and 2 times k square are integer and we know that sum of 2 integers is an integer. So, therefore, we have found that n square can also be written as what? 2m plus 1 for some integer m which proves that n square is what? An odd number, n square is an odd number you can verify say for example, 27 is a odd number. So, what about 27 whole square 729 right. So, 13 is an odd number, 13 square is 116 is again is again an odd number right, but these are what? Just illustration, but here we have proved what? Logically by using what? The definition of an odd number that is all and then the squaring concept. Now, we want to give the, we want to prove the other part that is what? To assume that what? N square is an odd number to prove that what n is an odd number. So, now we shall assume that n square is what odd and to prove that n is an odd number. Now, can I give a direct proof? Here we are given a direct proof by just squaring n. Now, is it possible to do the same here? Because if you assume that n square is an odd number, then I have to write n square as what? Right? Something like 2 m plus 1, yes or no? If you assume that n square is odd, then we can write n square as what 2 n plus 1, we would like to find out the nature of what m, but for that I have to take the square root. So, if you take the square root, what will happen? n will become what? n will become square root of what 2 m plus 1, n will become square root of what 2 m plus 1, but because of the involvement of square root, it may not be possible to give you a direct proof because of the complexity involved with what finding the square root. So, it is not possible to give you a direct proof. So, therefore, we shall try to give an indirect proof. What do you mean by indirect proof? If possible, I want to show that n is odd. If possible, you start with assumption that n is not odd okay, and try to give a contradiction and try to coming at a contradiction, the same thing will be discussed. So, what we do? Suppose on the converse, let us assume that n is not odd. Let us assume that n is not or if I say that n is not odd, then n must be what? An even integer, because you know that integers are classified as only of two type, one is odd and the other is what? Even. So, if n is not odd, then it has to be what? An even integer. I can write the even integer as what? Multiple of 2. So, n equal to what? 2 times k. Now, if I square n square, it becomes what? 4 k square or 2 times what? 2 k square. So, what I got now? By assuming that n is not odd, or n as an even integer, I have found out that n square is an even integer, but according to our assumption what? n square is an odd integer, not an even integer. So, this is against our hypothesis, namely that what? n square is odd. So, therefore, right, we cannot start with assumption that n is not odd. So, n has to be an what? Odd integer. So, this proves that if n square is odd, then n is an odd integer. So, here we are given an indirect proof. So, remember what is mean by indirect proof, right? Assume a, assume a wrong assumption relative to the hypothesis and try to arrive at contradiction or produce some contradiction the same way I did here. Assuming that n is even coming, coming out to be what? n square is an even number, but hypothesis is what? n square is odd. So, this is the contradiction we are added. So, in this way we have proved that if n square is odd, then n must be an odd integer. Now, similarly, the next problem, if 3 m plus 2 is an odd integer, if 3 m plus 2 is an odd integer, I must prove that what? m is an odd integer, right. Now, I start with assumption that 3 m plus 2 is odd. So, I must prove that m is also what? Odd. Now, how to prove this result? Because we assume that 3 m plus 2 is odd, I can write 3 m plus 2 as what? 2 k plus 1, the same argument which we used in the previous slide. So, from here I will get what? 3 m equal to taking to the other side, I will get 3 m equal to what? 2 k minus 1. I will get that 3 m equal to t k minus 1, the way an odd integer. Why? Because, because what? 3 a multiple of 3 is what? Right? 3, because 3 m I written as what? 2 k minus 1. We know that 2 k minus 1 is also what? Odd an odd integer can always be written as either 2 k plus 1 or as what 2 k minus 1. So, what I got? I got that 3 m as an odd integer. I got that 3 m as an odd integer. So, from this right, we would like to uh, conclude whether m is what? Odd or not. Whether m is odd or not. What is your opinion? If 3 times m is an odd integer, 
then what can you say about m? 3 times m is odd. So, can I have m as an even number? So, what happens? For example, if I consider a m equal to 4 an even number, then 3 into 4 becomes what? Even number. Okay. If I consider that m as an even integer, say m equal to 10, right? then 3 times 10 equal to what? 30 an even number, but not an odd integer. So, therefore, right? so these examples should illustrate that m has to be what? An odd number. M has to be an odd number. Otherwise, what will happen? If you assume that m is not odd, if you assume that m is not odd or m as what? Even, then what is 3m plus 2? This becomes an even number. You can verify. Okay? I must prove that m is odd, giving an indirect proof. Assume that m is even, if possible. Then what is 3m plus 2? 3 times 2k plus 2. It is 6k plus 2. I can write it as 2 times 3k plus 1. Which is a this integer is a multiple of 2, so it is an even number. I get that 3m plus 2 is what even, but what is our assumption? Our assumption is what 3m plus 2 is odd. The hypothesis given to us is here 3m plus 2 is odd, so therefore 3m plus 2 cannot be an even number. So this happened because we start with the assumption that m is even, which is wrong. So again, once again, the conclusion is that if 3m plus 2 is what an odd integer, then n must be an odd integer. Here also we have used what an indirect proof. Here also we have used an indirect proof. Understood how to use an indirect proof for a problem like this. Okay, right. Similarly, I have got another problem that if n is an integer, then prove that if n is even, then 31 n plus 12 is what even. Assume that n is even, if and only if what 31 n plus 12 is even. You start with assumption that n is an even number. So, I can write n as what 2 times k, where k is an integer. Now, compute 31 n plus 12, that is 31 into 2 k, that is 62 k plus 12. Okay, right? So, what I got now from here that I will get that what 31 n, n plus 12 is an even number. Why? Because n is even, 31 into n is even, 12 is an even number. So, sum of two even number is what? An even number. Sum of two even number is even number. On the other hand, Assume that 31 n plus 12 is even. Now, to prove that what? n is an even integer. Now, to prove that n is an even integer, like what we have been doing earlier, we shall give an indirect proof by assuming that n is not even, but n is what? Odd. But n is odd. So, I can write n as what? 2 k plus 1 and compute once again 31 n plus 12 by substituting for n here, if you calculate, this will come out to be what? An odd number. This will come